If you're watching this video, chances are you have a dream of maintaining healthy eating practices now and basically for the rest of your life, but it's oh so hard. Yes, it's hard, but it's not impossible, but it's super hard. One of my feelings is that it's hard to maintain healthy eating if everybody else around you is just doing, you know, whatever, eating whatever, fast food and so on and so forth. And in the places where people for the most part are able to maintain healthy eating practices is because most people, that's what everybody else is doing. There are minimal to no options for unhealthy food, right? And better yet, those people who are eating healthy food are actually feeling better, right, as a result of that. And so I think if more people had these examples all around them, they would actually maintain successful um, changes, right, good eating practices. So you have to basically know how to maneuver your way in this uh, environment that is kind of set up um, to have you fail with your healthy eating practices. So what to do? I'm going to talk about five things that you can do to help you maintain, well, achieve and maintain healthy eating practices going forward, right? Probably the most important thing is to actually get an accountability body. And I've said this before, and many people have said this, but it is true. It is so important. You have to have somebody in your corner, somebody to call you out, somebody to kind of hold your hand, just a buddy, right? You, We all do better when we have somebody encouraging us along. It's almost like coach, right? And so having that person where you know they're going to check up on you, okay? And you don't want to have to disappoint them by telling them, ah, I didn't do too good today, right? We all want to impress, you know, our friends and each other. We don't want to let anybody down. And that's why having an actual body and accountability partner actually works, right? And so you have to you know, be serious about it. Make sure that they're bought into this whole thing with you and you're both on this, uh, um, with have this goal to continue to maintain healthy eating practices so that you can actually feel better and stay well and healthy into your, for the rest of your life, basically, for as long as you live, right? So have the accountability partner and actually give them permission to call you out. Because sometimes people have accountability partner. Some people, sometimes accountability partner is a spouse. And then I've had people who say, you know, like the spouse would maybe feel a little upset or um, kind of ruffled <laughs> if they were called out a little bit. And you're calling out with love, right? But basically make sure that you all both have permission to call each other out so that even if somebody feel ruffled, they know that, you know, it's because of love and caring why, you, why you're doing that. So you have to kind of establish that early on um, so that there are no major issues or falling, falling outs um, as time goes by. And for some people, it can't be the husband because the, or the wife for that matter, or the partner, because um, they're just gonna get too ruffled. So they just have to find somebody else. Sometimes you don't have a physical person, so it can actually be somebody online. Nowadays we have we have internet, social media, everything. And so you can actually have accountability partners online. You can join Facebook groups, etc. I happen to have a Facebook group. It's called Best Life Bites. And in that group, I have that as a sort of accountability group to for, us, for everyone to keep each other um, going, keep each other positive and keep each other reaching the goals. Okay, I've had that group for over three years now. So you can check that out um, in the links below. Second thing, okay, which I think is extremely helpful is as much as possible, if you can prepare your meals at home. So many advantages to preparing your meals at home. Okay, yes, it, there are disadvantages, big one being time, you know, to it takes to prepare the meals and so on and so forth. But in terms of the advantages, the big thing is that you control exactly what goes in. So a lot of times we're eating food, we, we think we, we're eating vegetables, we're eating our meat and we're eating whatever else. But what else is has been put in those things a lot of times when you buy food at restaurants the sauces have lots of sugar the condiments just generally lots of sugar i think it was a chef that chef i forget his name that said you can improve any meal with a good sauce and usually the sauces even if they're salty they most likely have sugar added to them so the thing about cooking at home is that you can control every ingredient you put in your food for the most part okay just be careful when you buy packaged foods that you read those ingredient lists as well so that you know what goes into those and also if possible have ingredient lists that are short five or less ingredients in whatever the packaged food is okay so prepare your meals at home as much as you can now okay you might say i don't have time i am busy and so on and so forth if you can prepare at least one meal, and I think the most important meal to prepare at home or to have at home is breakfast because that sets the stage for the rest of your day. Okay, once you have a good breakfast, 
Chances are if that breakfast is not very sweet or starchy, it's not going to set off a day of cravings because of peaks and lows in blood sugar levels, okay? Having a good breakfast that is maybe like a savory, say you have a savory breakfast, you have something like omelette, egg, you have some sort of like sardine, salad, you can have some toast as well with that. But if you have for the most part a savory breakfast, which has a good bit of protein and healthy fat, and then whatever else you have, then you have your day set with stable blood sugar levels so that you're not gonna be crashing by 10 a.m. and then going to whatever is available, which would probably not be something good, okay? Choose, have breakfast. If you're going to plan to have breakfast every day, of course, you need to think it out, you know, plan from the night before and so on so that maybe some things are prepared ahead of time and so you don't have to spend all that time in the morning, especially if you're a person who needs to go out early um, for your work, okay? So having a breakfast, say a savory breakfast one that's not sweet like cereal but something probably cooked if not a savory breakfast like an actual like meal that you're going to eat right you can consider something like uh uh bulletproof coffee um basically butter coffee right and that might sound weird and i used to think that was weird as well and i first heard about a butter and coffee that's so weird but it's the smoothest most filling um beverage you can start your morning off and because it has butter okay and if you can you know you choose maybe grass-fed butter or whatever but because and unsalted of course because it has butter and we have to add some collagen in ours as well you can choose your you can look up the recipe but um bulletproof coffee because it's so rich with all that butter it's going to give you energy because remember fat is very calorie dense compared to other uh, macronutrients right but it's not that you are worried, oh my goodness, like I'm having, I don't know, 250 calories, but because it's a slow burning form of energy that is going to sustain you for quite a few hours. And in fact, sometimes I, if I don't pay attention, um, I can actually go until midday without having anything to eat, depending on what's going on in my day. Okay. So it depends on you. Not everybody has that much weight to lose. Um, so if you're not trying to lose weight, you know, like me, um, you might want to maybe have something with it or you just kind of listen to your body. Cause sometimes if you don't feel hungry, you just don't feel hungry. Right. So I don't feel hungry. And so I, I just have the bulletproof coffee, but that's a good start as well. Obviously it takes a little time to make it, but once you get the hang of it, and you have your little blender or you can use a whisk or something and you can just make that cup of coffee quickly bulletproof coffee or butter coffee you can put collagen if you want some extra uh protein and then if you have a mug you can and you have to run out the door you can just put it in your mug and you can drink that um on your way to work so just a good solid breakfast to start your day if that's going to be the only meal you're going to prepare at home third thing is that if you're going to be dining one you know you might be, be dining out at restaurants um or in the office cafeteria or whatever have an idea of what you're going to get when before you go because you don't want to go and then be aimlessly looking around and then if you're hungry and you just kind of grab whatever is there which might not, not be the best so have an idea of what's on the menu and know what you're going to get before you get there and stick to it don't let peer pressure get to you just know what you're going to get stick to it and if there's going to be some kind of peer pressure either sit you know by yourself or go back to your office or if your buddy's at work you can hang with your buddy and you all can you know have your healthy meal and feel good together doing that okay number four is um when you know okay it might be that there are lots of different options and so on and to be honest i wouldn't necessarily say that anything is bad but you definitely want to make sure you have lots of the really supportive foods to go with whatever else you're having to counteract whatever potential negative effects those foods might have, okay? So um, have the, uh, uh, the, the healthier foods first, okay? Um, and then the processed foods after. And chances are the wholesome, less or unprocessed foods will fill you so much that you won't have space for the processed foods. That's the idea. Or you will have less space for the processed foods. Generally speaking too, you want to have a good mix of plant-based foods. And if you're a person who is not accustomed to eating vegetables, I like to recommend my 5 4 3 2, 1 plan when it comes to introducing vegetables, where for the first week, you start off the, on the weekend or whenever the first day you go to the supermarket and go in the vegetable section and select five vegetables, any type, but five vegetables that you can palate, that you can manage to eat, okay? So that's five. And then four is that you are going to steam, right? Steam, the mode of preparation is steaming because it's the easiest, okay? And you steam those uh, vegetables for four minutes, um, you know, and then you can use uh, butter, sorry, not, well, you can use butter to flavor them or you can sprinkle a little uh, salt and pepper on them, okay? And then three is that you're going to select 
three of the five vegetables. That's going to be the very vari variation or the variety. At least three. You can have all five if you want, but at least three of the five vegetables every day. Okay, at least three because you want more variety. And then you're going to do that for at least two meals or at least two times per day. So at least two of your meals will have at least three, any combination of three of the five or more, with more than three of the five vegetables. And you're going to do that for a whole week to begin with. And you will feel better. More vegetables, more fiber will automatically let anyone feel better, especially if you're a person who does not eat a lot of those things, okay? Do that for the first week, and then you can gradually introduce more types of vegetables and just other plant-based foods in general, okay? And that brings me to the fifth one, which is when in doubt with any meal, start with vegetables. So you might be out to an Italian restaurant, lots of pasta and other things, and you're really gonna enjoy it because it's a good restaurant, start with a salad, start with some kind of vegetable. You can start with a, a bowl of Brussels sprouts. Sometimes they have a baked, uh, uh, grilled uh, uh, Brussels sprouts. Just start with some form of vegetable. If it's a variety, good. If it's just something like Brussels sprouts or cauliflower, start with a vegetable. You will always overall enhance your response, the way your body responds to whatever the rest of the meal will be just because you started with a vegetable, regardless of whatever else you had after that, right? So I hope you all found those five points uh, helpful. Like I said, it's really challenging. It's tough to maintain healthy eating habits when everybody around you is eating in a way that's not necessarily what you want to do, okay? If you're in a country, like I told a story recently of somebody who went to in, uh, Israel, and because there was only healthy food available, that's all he ate. He lost quite a bit of weight for the two weeks he was there. He felt amazing, had so much energy. But then when he came back to the United States, unfortunately, he gradually put back on all the weight that he lost because he just wasn't able to maintain those healthy eating habits anymore. And, you know, didn't have the support in terms of a body and just busy at work and so on. So it's tough. Definitely, I'm not going to say it's not tough. But you have to put these uh, things in place to support you in maintaining these healthy eating habits. I hope you all found this helpful. Check below. I have links to resources uh, for other things and ways that I have to encourage you to eat healthier. And also the point, whole point is to actually feel better and live a more productive, um, happy, joyful life. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your evening.